guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Shantae Marie here and I am a lifestyle vlogger here on YouTube. I strive to make content that can help you guys out in some way, shape, or form. So if you guys are new, make sure you hit that subscribe button and also do not forget to give this video a thumbs up because it really helps the YouTube algorithm to help other people to find my YouTube channel. So. I've been gone for a hot minute and I'm really sorry but my life has been extremely hectic. I just wanted to quickly say that if you're an OG subscriber I truly appreciate you reaching out to me through other forms of social media and just checking to make sure that me and baby are doing okay. It means so much to me and I wish I could give each and every one of you guys a hug that have done that. Um, but today we're actually going to do part two of the first trimester symptoms. I literally thought that I was doing second trimester symptoms and I just realized that it's only the first trimester that I've talked about on my channel so far. So this video and the next video I am probably gonna be wearing, well I am gonna be wearing the same clothes because I am about to record part two and then I am also going to, uh, the next video is gonna be second trimester symptoms. So. All of the videos um, for the symptoms will be linked in the description bar and I'll put a little thing up here so you guys can click on it if you're ready to move on to the next one. I am currently 30 weeks pregnant today so we catching up. We got catching up to do. So I think in the first video I said I had 15 symptoms but when I go through and count it's definitely more than that. So we're, if you guys haven't seen part one, watch part one. This is part two, so you can finish this one and go back, or you can go back and come back to this one, whatever, but this is the second part. So, the first thing that I wanted to talk about is weight loss. When I first found out that I was pregnant, it was very strange because I lost a ton of weight, um, and I'm talking like probably over 10 pounds, and the doctor would always just be like, are you not eating because you're sick, or like, like what's going on because you haven't gained any weight and it actually for me went like that even into the second trimester um, but I it didn't have anything to do with me not eating because I was trying to eat once I did become nauseous I, I felt like I needed to eat it was just I wasn't I was losing weight um, I didn't feel good I stopped going to the gym so I know I was losing muscle and I could tell by looking at my body that I was losing muscle mass so yeah it was just crazy I went from weighing like hundred and sixty three pounds I dropped to like 153 so I guess technically when I started out my pregnancy I was only like in in between 150 and 160 like weight weight range wise um, so I couldn't even give you guys like my actual beginning weight because I just started losing tons of weight at the beginning and um, that's actually not like uncommon so that's a symptom to definitely pay attention to I guess uh, I did read in the app that I use pregnancy app that I use a lot of other women experience that as well the second thing is food cravings they weren't so bad in the first trimester um, the first trimester the only things that I craved was like I I craved pickles two nights for dinner I literally ate pickle a whole jar of pickles like a whole medium sized jar of pickles and I also ate uh, I like the sea salt and vinegar chips it was like I just needed that and I think what I like my body was wanting the salt I guess I also noticed that I craved chocolate a lot which is super uncommon for me I don't like chocolate really at all the only times that I ever ate chocolate before this was um, when I was about to be on my period or anything so I definitely like would keep chocolate around the house uh, but that subsided in the second trimester third thing I put is baby brain um, this is not a joke like this is so not a joke it's not even funny I work in human resources for the military and like my brain functionality is so bad compared to before I'm super forgetful I will do things at work that sometimes I will physically say out loud loud why did I do that uh, or I'll say things and what's coming out of my mouth doesn't make any sense at all 
Um, the pregnancy brain, like the jokes about it, it, it's funny, but like for real, it's a thing. The next one is needing to eat constantly. I kind of already said this, but I felt like I needed to eat constantly in the first trimester because I always felt nauseous. But if I would eat something, the nausea feeling, like the feel of wanting to vomit and everything, it would just go away. So eventually I just at work would keep um, a box of saltine crackers there and any time that I felt nauseous I would just eat a couple of them and then I'd be okay for like 20 minutes so it def it sucked really bad <laughs> dry skin okay I put dry skin on here so the whole skin situation I don't know if you guys can tell I'm like looking at a screen right here but I have had oily skin like I'm talking bad oily skin my whole life and basically at the beginning I just realized my skin was so dry that at times I would be like ashy around like this whole area of my face and I couldn't figure out like why and then um, I that mixed with acne and just like the whole combination of all of it is just really crazy and honestly pregnancy is the only thing that I could blame it on like the fluctuation in hormones has totally changed that for me so I, it's one of those things like it's taken me a lot to get used to like doing my makeup and stuff is really difficult for me because I've always been an oily skinned person so all of the makeup that I have is for oily skin so when I do my makeup it honestly looks really bad at the beginning because my skin is so dry now that it, it just it doesn't look right so I started about month through or yeah when I was like three months pregnant I ended up asking my dermatologist office if they knew where I could go for facials and stuff because I just really needed help with my skin because you can't use a lot of stuff on your skin like all, all of my medications for my face were prescribed by my dermatologist and they are all medicines that they've not done scientific studies or anything on it to see how it would affect an unborn child so most of them just say don't use it so I had to like cut out everything that was prescribed for my doctor and it was just like I was lost in the sauce for three months so basically since month three I have been going to the dermatologist regularly if that's something that you guys want to see videos of just leave it in the comments or give this video a thumbs up and I will make a vlog of my experience because I am going next week for my monthly appointment. I go once a month. Honestly, I should go like twice a month, but it is a little bit costly. It's like sometimes my treatment is like $100. It just depends on what I'm getting done. And I originally went there to try to get a hydrofacial but you can't get those done if you're pregnant. So I have to wait till I'm not pregnant before I can try the hydrofacial. But I've basically just been doing another type of facial that I can't really remember what it is called. Um, but I also uh, have purchased a lot of the products that they use on my face in the facial like in like when I'm there so that way when I'm at home and I notice that my skin starts to get out of control um, I can use some of the items that they've given me to try to combat it because there was one time that my face was broke out so bad and I went and got a facial and literally my acne was gone like the next day like it took two days for my face to be back to normal but my face looks great like for two weeks after I get it done so that's why I say I wish I could go like I wish that I wish I could afford to go twice a month or more like it just makes me feel so much better and since I'm not getting my nails done anymore or my toenails done it's just a form of self-care that I really I feel I feel deserving of it and like your skin is something that's with you for the rest of your life so I just really want to pay attention to it a little bit more and yeah I I just feel like you should totally pick something when you're pregnant to like treat yourself so I've I've had massages some months I've been getting the facials um, I'm about to be getting my toenails done like I don't know I just dry skin that was the purpose of that little tangent that we went on next thing there's only two more the first thing is bloat in the beginning of pregnancy 
you bloat like a lot like it's really funny because I was taking like pregnancy photos like bump dates and um, you really feel like oh the baby it's showing my stomach's showing you can tell I'm pregnant and most regular like people around you are like I can't even tell but it's literally bloat like for the first few months it's literally bloat unless you're like on child number two or more like it's bloat and so when you take pictures and send it to people it's like oh my gosh this is my baby showing but like it's not so now when I go back and look at those pictures I'm just like girl you were not showing I honestly did not start showing until about two week, like two weeks ago so that's 28 weeks pre pregnant that's when I started showing so the bloating though is crazy and I remember when I first got pregnant and I found out in July I went to the pool and like I didn't well I didn't know I was pregnant yet I went to the pool like a couple days before I found out and I couldn't figure out I was like why do I not have abs anymore like I just don't understand am I about to start my period like what's going on then I ended up finding out I was pregnant it was literally because I was bloated because I was pregnant so the bloat is real and the last thing that I wanted to hit on is something called lightning crotch I do not know if I touched on this in the last video but lightning crotch is is a very non medical term for this feeling that you like get I don't okay I'm this is gonna be graphic it's a feeling that you get in the area the the crotch area that um, it literally feels like if you were getting like zapped by something um, so they call it lightning crotch and it's just like I don't know how how to explain it but it happened pretty frequently for me at the beginning of pregnancy and basically the way that I combated it is if I was laying in bed or on the couch or something I would try to elevate my feet like above my heart and my head and stuff and that would usually fix the feeling of it so it wasn't a continuous thing so yeah um, I'm pretty sure that it's when your baby is like sitting lit real low um and for a while she was sitting really low or my ultrasound pictures in the beginning all of them she's upside down in it because she was head down like the whole beginning of it like it was just crazy so that's what caused me to feel like that and it's real crazy that I'm in the third trimester now and I haven't felt lightning crotch at all since the first trimester so I'm kind of nervous because I heard I heard that you get it really, you get it a lot before, before you give birth. And I'm sure that it's because your baby is obviously, hopefully changing to being head down to prepare to come out. So that is the end of this video. That is the end of the first trimester symptoms. As I said before, if you guys have not already, make sure you hit the subscribe button and don't forget to thumbs up this video. I appreciate you guys for watching and I will check you guys in the next video. Bye.